Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer. Rocking the Lou Dort jersey for tonight's episode because my guy Lou Dort got snubbed off of an all-defensive team. That's not what this video about is about, but I do want to preface the video with saying that I think Lou Dort deserved recognition. I think he uh, was deserving of a spot. There are a bunch of great defenders. I'm not mad that other guys got it over him. He's just my guy, and so I would have loved to see Ludort on there. I believe he earned it. I think he was one of the best defenders in the entire NBA this season on a roster where, for a lot of the season, there just weren't good defensive players around him. He guarded the opposing team's best player every single night without fail. It was amazing to watch him play defense this season, and I think he is going to be a perennial all-defensive guy. Going forward, I think this year he established himself as a great defender, and with the outrage that I've seen on Twitter, uh, shout out to everyone who tweeted out that Lou Dort got snubbed, because Lou Dort was trending on Twitter for a little bit today, and I like to think that... Um, this outrage maybe will help Ludort get more recognition in the future. I think Ludort, like I said, will be a perennial all-defensive guy, maybe future defensive player of the year. Who knows? It's tough to get for guards, but if I'm betting betting on anyone, I'm betting on Lou Dort. So that's not what this video is about, but I did want to preface because I thought people might be interested in my opinion as a Thunder fan. So shout out Lou Dort. He deserves an award. And even though I didn't expect him to get it, was hopeful, didn't end up getting it. We move on to next season. But this video is about the two playoff games that happened today. Two really pivotal game fours, two teams trying to avoid going down one to three in their respective series. And both of the teams tied it up. Uh, the Clippers and Hawks are getting big wins on their home courts today, beating two really tough teams in the Jazz and the Sixers. I'm going to start with the Jazz Clippers game. And what I really want to talk about is why the Jazz are struggling so much and what the Clippers have been kind of doing to shut them down. The main thing with the Jazz right now is the lack of Mike Conley. And I don't think that's a secret. I think everyone watches this team and sees, hey, they need Mike Conley. But I've seen some people tweet out recently, so I'm going to say it anyways. They've been tweeting out like, does Mike Conley really change this series? And the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, Mike Conley was a lot of times this season, the best player on the court for the Jazz. He was an all-star. He's a great facilitator and he really slows the game down for them. He is the motor behind their offense and has been this entire season. So when you don't have that and you have to adjust on the fly in the playoffs, especially against a Clippers team that is really sound defensively, it's tough. This is something I said in the Hawks-Knicks series. The Knicks were getting no easy shots, and you can make tough shots in the regular season, but when you play the same team over and over and over again, those tough shots aren't always going to fall. The Jazz, a lot of times this season, have excelled because they get easy open looks, and that has a lot to do with Mike Conley and their ball movement as a team, which Mike Conley is the motor behind. So without Mike Conley, the Jazz are struggling to get open looks, especially when they're playing a really tough defensive team in the Los Angeles Clippers with two incredible defenders, one of them making an all defensive team today in Kawhi Leonard. Congrats to him. So are the Jazz screwed if they don't get Mike Conley back? Yes. If the Jazz don't get Mike Conley back, this is over in six games. They need him back next game if possible. Hamstring injuries are tough. I would not be surprised if Conley didn't come back. Because those hamstring injuries are something you really just don't want to risk sometimes. And I know this is their chance to win a championship. This is a year where they should be going all out for it. But Mike Conley doesn't have a lot of years in his career left. And I don't blame him or the Jazz doctors if they look at him and go, he is not healthy enough. He can't play. A lot of people might call him soft. A lot of people might say stupid stuff. But Mike Conley, if he's healthy, needs to play in this game. If he's not healthy enough, it's just it's just sucks. Um, that's kind of been the nature of these playoffs. We've seen a lot of big injuries, and some people are going to say that's like an asterisk or whatever. Uh, asterisk? Why can't I say that word? We're going to skip it. Um, a lot of people are going to say that this doesn't count or whatever, but the playoffs are always places where injuries affect it. It's There's never been a season where injuries have not affected the playoffs at all. It's just not how it works. That's not how contact sports work. So... Hopefully Mike Conley comes back, but if he doesn't come back, the Jazz are kind of screwed. On the Clippers side of the ball, like I said, the Clippers are really locking in on defense, but the big thing is the way that their offense has stepped up, especially against a really tough Jazz team. The Jazz play great defense, and so to continue to get open looks, and more importantly for the Clippers, knock down their contested looks, it's been impressive. 
there was a stat out there talking about Kevin Durant earlier um, where he was shooting like 50% or something on like contested threes, which was ridiculous. And that's kind of how the Clippers have felt these last two games, especially Kawhi Leonard is hitting a lot of tough shots. And I talked about Kawhi in length in a couple of the past few videos because he has continued to perform up to a really high level in these playoffs, especially in a couple of those games in that Dallas series. But what I really want to talk about is in this section of the video, Paul George. Playoff P, Pandemic P, Pfizer P, Vaccine P, all nicknames I've seen for Paul George, whatever you want to call him. He has been phenomenal in the playoffs. Paul George is balling, and he is destroying all the narratives that exist about him. And I, I love to see it. Um, as a Thunder fan, you might think I hate Paul George or something because he left. I don't. Um, and I like seeing people prove people wrong. It's cool. I love when athletes who get a lot of hate, for example, Ben Simmons is a guy that I'm a big fan of because a lot of people give him hate and I think it's completely unwarranted. So I like to root for those guys. Paul George is balling out. He has been so good for the Clippers in these playoffs. I tweeted before the playoffs, Paul George, in my opinion, is in for a great playoff run. And you know what happened? I got clowned. People said, okay, we'll see. We'll all come back to this tweet when the playoffs roll around. Or they were like, really? You really think that? Or like, oh, you must have been hacked or something. I had a good feeling. Paul George, for the beginning of the season, was an MVP candidate. Throughout the first couple weeks of the season, Paul George was a top five MVP candidate. Not in the West, not whatever, in, in the entire league. He was really good. And I think people forgot about that. Because towards the end of the season, he slowed. And that is kind of what we've seen from Paul George a lot in his career. He always goes into these like slumps towards the end of the season, whether it is due to injury. He's had a lot of wear and tear on those shoulders. That's been a big injury of his throughout his career. Whether it's into the playoffs where, especially for the Thunder, I saw it firsthand, he didn't perform up to the level that we needed him to a lot of the times. One that comes to mind, and we'll see one of these in here as well, is Game 6 against the Jazz in 2018. He just didn't perform. We needed him really badly, and he just didn't step up. And for performances like that, I get it. I get it, people being critical of that because that's the way it goes. But there's a fine line between being critical and hating someone. When you are critical of someone, you look at their game and go, hey, this was not good. This is what he needs to do better. And when he plays well, you acknowledge that. If you hate the guy, or if you're a hater, you just like slandering him. When he has a good game, you don't say anything. Or when he has a good game, you make excuses for the other team or go, that won't happen again. That's not me. I'm someone who, as a, well, I'm not going to say analyst, but as someone who watches the NBA frequently and comments on it through YouTube and Twitter, I both criticize players because that I say what I observe, but I also give praise to guys. Even players that I might like, like if I'm rooting for one team, say I'm rooting for the Thunder, if a guy comes in like Kevin Durant, for example, a guy that a lot of Thunder fans hate, he comes in and he destroys the Thunder, I'm going to give him credit because he, he beat us. He's a great player and I don't like discrediting people's greatness or not acknowledging great things. It takes away from them. So Paul George is playing phenomenally and I'm going to let you know if you're someone who doesn't like Paul George then you can just go ahead and click off the video, but um, he's playing great. And I have his stats pulled up over here to give some reference. Paul George in these playoffs is averaging 25 points per game, 8.6 rebounds, 5.2 assists, which is big because a lot of time last season, the big narrative around the Clippers was they didn't have any ball handling, any playmaking. He's been great for them in that aspect. 44% from the field, that could go up. 36.1% uh, from three and 89.5% from the line while playing really good defense. That's all you can't ask for much more. If he's playing like this, and this is another tweet that I had like a couple months ago, I tweeted out that if Paul George keeps playing like he is now, this was towards the beginning of the season, I believe when he was playing like an MVP, like I talked about, I said, if Paul George plays like this, this Clippers team could very well win the championship. And you know what? Or, oh my God, what was that? You know what? He is. He's playing like he was. And because of that reason, this Clippers team looks like they can win a championship. I wouldn't be surprised. I, uh, I've i said, it, it's well documented, that I want the Suns to come out of the West. And I think they will. I think that Suns team is built for these playoffs. And I think they're going to come out of the Western Conference. But that doesn't mean the Clippers can't ruin that. Um, 
The Clippers are really good, and Paul George is a big reason why. Last season, Kawhi had some big games, uh, but Paul George really didn't show up that much, and that was a problem. That was well, well documented um, from the pandemic P nicknames to a lot of playoff P stuff. I've made jokes before, I have, but when a player has a good performance, you've got to give them credit. And I haven't seen Twitter give him much credit, so I'm going to do it here. Paul George has been phenomenal. This is what I wish playoff P looked like in Oklahoma City. And I'm happy for him shaking those demons, and he's really destroying all of those narratives about him being a playoff underperformer, about him choking. There's still time for him to have some poor performances. If I, maybe I make this video and he comes out next game and the game after, and he shoots like three for 30 or something crazy like that between the two games and the Jazz win in six, maybe that's possible. But I don't think so. I think Paul George has exercised his playoff demons, and I personally think Paul George is going to be the reason why the Clippers win this series and potentially make it to the finals. Kawhi Leonard can't do it all on his own. We've seen him try. It failed last season. Now, Paul George is stepping up. And not just him. Marcus Morris had a great game tonight as well with 24 points. If you are giving up... Uh, 31 points to Kawhi, 31 to Paul George. By the way, he had 31, 9, and 4 tonight in 40 minutes. Um, and 24 to Marcus Morris, you're not going to win. You just won't. It's going to be near impossible. Because um, if those guys are scoring that much, you're, you're done. Especially if Marcus Morris is getting going like that. This was a good team win for the Clippers. I just want to give Paul George this credit because I don't think I've talked about him enough in these videos, and he is the reason why they're winning a lot of these games. Kawhi Leonard, obviously their best player. But you don't win in this league without a great secondary star. That's what Paul George is doing. Shout out to him. Shout out to Playoff P. We'll go with that. Hawk Sixers. The Hawks got a big win. Like I said, this was a game they had to win. I said that previously, and additionally, in the last video, I said I thought the Sixers had the Hawks figured out. And even though the Hawks won this, I still believe that. Um, this was a weird win for the Atlanta Hawks. Joel Embiid looked really off. He went 0 for 12 from the field in the second half. And the only team I've ever seen make him do that is the Toronto Raptors. And I promise you, the Hawks weren't playing as good of defense as the Raptors have played on him in the past. They were playing good defense. They were. They were getting physical with Joel Embiid. They were forcing him to take tough looks. But those were things he's been knocking down all season. And so, the question is, why wasn't he hitting them? And he just looked really tired and really... He just looked like he was hurt. I don't know if the... The knee kind of flared up uh, in the, I think it was the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter. Joel Embiid went to the back room for treatment, and that was something he's kind of been doing over the course of this series, but he was in there for a while, and after that, he never really looked right. There were a couple times where he was physically limping out there, and at the end of the game, he had a drive. He had a wide open layup with the opportunity to take the lead and potentially win this game, and he missed. He just didn't get enough height up. Joel Embiid, the one that I know, would have dunked that ball, and he didn't. He tried to go for a layup, and it was kind of a tough layup, but it was open. He should have hit it, and he didn't. Um, I don't think Joel Embiid is fully healthy. We know that, actually, because he has a tear in his meniscus, but this was the first time I've really seen it impact him in a big way. Um, Embiid has really been a soldier and been dominant despite having that injury, but if he keeps playing like this, the Hawks are going to win this series. Or they've got a decent shot at winning this series. I hope Joel Embiid's okay, but it didn't look good in, at the end of this game. And I do think um, it took Joel Embiid shot 4 for 20 in this game, and the Hawks only won by 3. They need to do a better job of stopping the other guys. Because even with you can't be winning by 3 points with Joel Embiid only having 17. Joel Embiid is good enough to drop 30 on you any given night. And if he's only dropping 17 and you're winning by three, you've got to be a little bit better. And that was mainly just the Sixers playing great defense. The Hawks were getting, like, they were getting decent looks. But the problem was they weren't able to convert them because a Sixer was always closing out. They were double teaming. They were swarming. They have three all defensive players now that we've seen the teams come out. Matisse Thibel, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid. All three of them are great defenders. All defense. But the Hawks, the big reason they won was Trey Young. And Trey Young is someone who I've been saying is built for the playoffs. He had 25, 4, and a career high 18 assists in this game, including one where at the end of the game, it was like one of the best passes I've ever seen. Wrap around to the corner, John Collins hitting a three. It was incredible. It was an amazing, amazing pass. And 
it's what Trae Young's got to do. Trae Young has not only cannot only be a scorer in this series. He's got to be a playmaker. There are too many great defenders in this series for the Sixers for Trae Young to focus only on scoring. Because if he's only looking for his own shot, and he typically doesn't, but if he's only looking for his own shot, then the other guys are not going to be able to get good looks because there's just too much length on this Sixers team, too much hustle, and too much defensive ability. Trey Young won his team almost single-handedly this game. Bogdan Bogdanovich also had 22. He was great. Uh, John Collins really turned this game around with some offensive rebounding in that second half. He really was getting around screens, getting around box outs, doing whatever he had to do to get those rebounds. And that was huge for this team because they needed those extra shots. With the way the Sixers were going and the way this game was going, I thought it was over at halftime. The Sixers were up by like 18 in um, the second quarter, I believe. And the Hawks, they came out. Prove me wrong. I thought it was over. It wasn't. And similar to this series, I thought this series was over and it wasn't. Um, two games to two. It's a big win for the Hawks. Um, I'm still leading Sixers in this one if Joel Embiid is healthy. But the Hawks continue to make strides. And even if the Hawks don't end up winning this series, or they could. They could definitely win this series. But even if they don't, you've got to be proud if you're a Hawks fan or if you're the Hawks themselves about the way they're playing a really, really, really good Philly team really close. They've won more games than I predicted them to win in this series, and they've shocked me. Not shocked me, but they've surprised me. And I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the things that the Hawks are doing. I think they have a lot of tough decisions to make in the offseason, specifically looking at John Collins. But overall, they've done a phenomenal job building this team. And if they want to win, they want to keep beating the Sixers, they've got to keep hitting their threes. That's the big thing for this team. And Trey Young is the guy who not only is going to get his own shot, but he needs to get those shots for other guys. They had 12 threes tonight. They've got to make more. In the future, they've got to make more threes if they want to win games. This was an ugly one. But the Hawks have been winning ugly games all year. Or not all year, but especially in uh, the playoffs. They won a lot of ugly games against the Knicks. And that first win they got against the Sixers was very ugly as well. The difference between that first win and this win is that in this one, the Hawks came from behind, which is something I didn't think they had in them. So credit to the Hawks for, for proving me wrong. Credit to the Hawks for getting a big win against the Sixers. The Sixers have got to go back to Philly and win this game five so that they can try and close it out in six. The Hawks, on the other hand, they can still lose game five and try and get back in it. But this game five in both of these series is very pivotal. Pivotal. What the hell am I saying? It is very pivotal. <laughs> I'm struggling. So I'm going to end the video. Um, I don't think there's much more I need to say or I'm going to botch it. So I appreciate it. Oh my god i appreciate you guys watching this video i will see you guys later let me know what you thought about these games can the hawks win this series are the sixers going to finish them off in six or seven games or do the hawks take it in six or seven in terms of clippers jazz uh, who do you have winning that series if mike conley does, doesn't come back do the jazz stand a chance and is paul george like i mentioned the x factor for this series uh, if you made it to this point in the video drop me a playoff p in the comment section below to show him some love i appreciate you guys watching i'll see you guys later Everyone say it back.